G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Welcome to the dev server. I don't really do much dev server content because I don't really find it particularly intuitive, but this time around, because the F-14 Tomcat is such a large release, or at least a very hyped release, uh, justifi justifiably so as well, uh, I thought we might actually have a specific look at the F-14 Tomcat and have a discussion as to whether or not I think it might be a bit overpowered. You might even see this video titled as something like is the MiG-29 really necessary to counter the F-14? In a similar way that I asked the same question about the MiG-23M. Now, I understand the F-14 to be quite a significant aircraft, both in its, you know, uh, pop culture history and, of course, in its actual role as an aircraft uh, and, and its military service. So, the F-14 in War Thunder currently comes with a fairly interesting amount of uh, missiles. You can pack eight, uh, and these eight can come in the form of AIM-54s, AIM-9Hs, and of course the AIM-7Fs. The sort of selection of missiles here is really interesting, and to me, this is the thing that I really want to hone in on today. The performance of the plane is good. It is extremely good. It's about 1400, it's just shy of 1500 on the deck, and I believe its acceleration will be somewhat on par uh, with those of the uh, the faster jets in the game, like maybe the MiG-23 the MIG MLD. The F-14 has a decent amount of flares, it's got 60, and that basically puts it on par with a lot of the other jets at top tier, like the Vigan, uh, the Mirage, uh, but it doesn't put it on par with the Phantoms or for that matter, the MiG-23 MLD. These are the differences that we're going to be sort of exploring in, in more depth, if you will, about this plane, because that is the thing that makes this plane not horribly overpowered. Now, when we explore the plane's performance, you might think that top speed is quite the, the you know, quite the eye-opener, almost 1,500 kilometers per hour on the deck, but in fact, there are a couple of planes already at that BR that do make that sort of speed at sea level. In fact, uh, you can even push the Draken to make those speeds at sea level. The thing that the F-14, I believe, has an advantage is that energy retention. You see, of course, it's going to trade that with a bit of uh, turning capability, which we'll discuss in a bit. But for the moment, it seems like the F-14 is going to be that sort of long range, uh, I guess, what in prop terms you would refer to as a boom and zoomer. The F-14 is not going to be one of those planes that's going to be in the middle of a dogfight and absolutely ripping through everything like an F-5 or like a MiG-21 or like a Mirage 3 or a Draken. You're not going to have that ability. It's basically going to be a build-on of what is already there in the F-4 Phantom. It's basically going to be that step up and that's what I see in these planes. The performance is a lot higher. You have a lot more top speed, but of course, you are very, very heavy. This thing, I can only see it getting absolutely mauled by MiG-23s in a low-speed rate fight, and anything else at, as, a, as a result of that, if you will, is pretty much gone. However, what you will be able to do is energy fight. If, if Barring missiles, say, towards the end of the game, there's one or two people left, and you're in one versus one dogfights without missiles, the F-14 is going to be that plane that can energy fight, so you're going to kind of play it like a like a modern Hawker Hunter. You're going to have to use your speed, use your energy, and play it that way. At least that's the way I'm seeing. Of course, you do get your 20mm Vulcan cannon, which is exactly what you would expect on an American aircraft. I think it's a really good gun. Uh, you've got plenty of ammunition. I think it's like... Is it 1,200 or 700 rounds? Either way, you have hundreds of ammunition, so you, you're going to be fine. Now, let's discuss the other weaponry, and these are the missiles. Now, stock, you're going to get 9Ds and 9Gs, and these are basic. I would consider these to be the rudimentary, uh, sort of your lower tier missiles, which is fine. Uh, the 9Gs are a good starting point, especially for top tier, for an aircraft as important as the F-14. Now, the kicker here is when we get to the AIM-9H. Now, the AIM-9H is a step below the AIM-9L, uh, simply, well, it's sort of a step below, uh, I would consider it a step below the AIM-9L. I would consider it somewhat equivalent to the 9J, but of course, with a larger bore sight, that, uh, that sort of ability to 
fire high off the, off the bore angle. Um, in other words, it's a, it's a large outer circle. So you're going to get a nice large outer circle, and I believe you also get the range that is encompassed there by the AIM-9G. So you're going to have plenty of fun with those, and I think they're fairly viable. I would consider them an upgrade over the AIM-9Js, uh, and I would consider it a very good addition for top tier. Could this plane get AIM-9Ls? Well, I see it as entirely feasible, but I think it's down to the capabilities of its opposing aircraft. The AIM-9Ls are extremely capable, but the one thing that they have that is a substantial upgrade over their opponents is range. It's not the head-on capability that's the issue. It's just that sheer amount of range and that sheer amount of ability to retain energy and keep moving at the same time, whereas the AIM-9H seems to only really have one or the other. The I see the R60s, uh, and sorry, the R60M as equivalent to the AIM-9L in movement, in dogfighting capability, if you will. But if you take the R60M and the AIM-9G and they make a baby, you basically get a 9L. I consider the 9L to be extremely good just because it matches those two capabilities together and you get a really strong, a really strong missile and a really strong weapon system. Now, I'm not really sure how it goes in terms of its... Uh, ability to stave off flares, uh, but we'll see that on the live server. I assume it's going to be similar to the 9Js. Of course, the 9Js are the, the brother or the cousin, the, the now distant cousin of the 9H. Uh, I would consider them uh, somewhat equivalent. They're okay, and I think that it is a good thing that they got 9Hs and not the 9Ls. That's the really important thing. The next step we're going to go to are the semi-active radar homing missiles. These are the uh, AIM-7s and the AIM-7Es. Um, I think these are completely fine, and I think you can stack up to six of them. You can definitely stack four. You could probably stack up to six. Of course, these are semi-active radar homing, and I think these are going to be completely fine. The kicker here are the AIM-54s. These are the AIM-54As. And these are the first active radar homing missiles in the game. Well, at least terminal active radar homing. So I think you do still need to get some sort of radar lock on these uh, on these missiles. But as soon as they start to guide themselves, the radar sort of switches over and, and it takes over um, the onboard radar, that is, onboard relative to the missile. So you have that ability to fire and forget, but of course... You still need to get that radar lock. There's still going to be a radar warning. Um, and of course, the AIM-54s are very long burning. So you're going to see them for a very long time. And of course, they only pull up to, I think it's 16 Gs. Uh, this may be corrected because it's the dev server. But these missiles do not have the dogfighting capability that something like the AIM-7F might have post-burn. This is where I think the question is to be raised whether or not the MiG-29S needs to be added to counter the F-14, and I think that answer is no. I don't think the MiG-29 is going to be a sort of thing that quashes the F-14. I think the F-14 is going to come to the game. It's going to be fairly okay. It might be a little, it might be the best jet, and it probably will be the best jet, but of course you're going to have your limitations, and the limitations should be enough to keep it sort of on par. You have fewer countermeasures, which is an absolute must for top tier. At, at the end of the day, the person with the most countermeasures has the best chance. And then on top of that, uh, barring that, it's the person with the most speed. And then barring that, it's the person with the most missiles. And so you have a combination of all three that puts it very high up the top, perhaps at the very, very top. But you don't have a combination that is going to absolutely blow the competition out of the water. I think what we have here is something that is going to come to the game and actually be fairly balanced. Balanced at what battle rating now? This is the one thing that I want to bring up. Currently on the dev server, the F-14 is at 11.3. Now, Gaijin has a habit of adding things at the maximum battle rating in order to maximize the number of games and probably to not mess with the quantitative matchmaker. I see the F-14 as the next step. It is a true fourth generation fighter. And of course, it being a true fourth generation fighter means that it has active radar homing missiles and it has extremely good performance. And I don't think 11.3 is representative of this plane. I think the 10.3 planes are going to get absolutely slaughtered. There is not much of a chance in hell that these planes, which oftentimes have sub 250 kilometers per hour top airspeed over this plane 
I think there's going to be a real struggle for those planes. So 10.7 is going to be ideal. So when the battle rating changes come around, we need to push for that 10.7, provided that my predictions and provided that my analysis is correct, which I hope to God it is. I will have to admit that my dev server takes have been very hot potatoes. So I'm hoping that this plane comes to game as balanced. I could be entirely wrong. That being said, I don't think we need the MiG-29 to combat things like the F-14. I think that the F-14 is a good next step. In this case, the F-48 early. If it was the F-14D that had more advanced missiles and that had better performance, then sure, add the MiG-29 all day, every day. But for now, I think we're in a very good spot. So, America is actually looking extremely good this patch. We have, of course, the F-14A, and then on top of that, some of the Phantoms can now carry an extra semi-active radar homing missile on those inner wing pylons. So we're going to have a lot of very good support upcoming this next patch. So ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it for today. I hope you enjoyed my analysis of the F-14A in the dev server. I seriously hope that I come to the game on patch day and I am correct because sometimes I get these very, very wrong and I hope to improve in my ability to, you know, forward analyze things. Of course, if you are looking to unlock the F-14A come patch day, you can always pick up some premiums if that is something that you want to do. And if you do want to do that, you can use my link in the description below to get 3% off. And of course, that gives me an extra 3% and gives you a very shiny decal as well. So thank you very much for your support in that regard. But alternatively, if you don't want to spend anything on War Thunder, you can always check out my Air Models link in the description below. Or you could be an absolute mad lad and support me on Patreon. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, if you don't have any money, you can always leave a link. Uh, link. You can always leave a like or a comment down in the description below, and that greatly improves the algorithm. Of course, if you've made it to the end of the video, let me know because you guys are the guys that really drive the views up. So, thank you very much for feeding the algorithm. All right, ladies and gents, that'll do it for me today. You guys take care, and I'll catch you next time.